What we're going to do for this problem is we're going to do exactly kind of what we did before in two different steps. All right, so we're going to do the same exact stuff, but we're going to kind of break it up. So what we have is I have x squared minus 4x minus 13 equals 0. Now remember, you always want to see, you know, can you factor this? And unfortunately, this cannot be factored in our normal case that we've worked on. And it's said to, fa it's said to solve by completing the square. Now remember, completing the square involves creating a perfect square trinomial. So you have to create a perfect square trinomial. So to do that, what we're going to do is we got to make sure we will, we got to create our perfect square trinomial. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is get my constant to the other side. So I have x squared minus 4x equals 13. All right? So now what we're going to do is exactly like what we just did. We are going to find the value c that will create a perfect square trinomial. So we've got to find the value. We've got to find a new value. So to find our new value, what we're going to do is exactly what we did before. Take our b divided by 2 and square it. So we're take negative 4 divided by 2 and square it. And we'll get positive 4, correct? So therefore, we write x squared minus 4x plus 4. Sorry equals 13. Okay. Now, going back to solving equations, all right, if you do something to one side, what do you always have to do on the other side? Same thing. Exact same thing. So what did we do over here? Okay. We added 4. So what do you think you're going to want to do on the other side? Add 4. Okay. Now, since we've created a perfect square trinomial, we can write this as a perfect square. Right? Does everybody follow me? Remember to always find the perfect square, just take your b and divide it by 2. Does everybody follow me so far with this? Remember, with 13, I moved to the other side. And then remember, since I added 4 on the left side to create a perfect square, I had to make sure I added 4 on the other side. Now, how many x's do we have, Ricardo? How many x's do I have in this equation? 1. Can we solve with just 1x by using inverse operations? Yeah. You can't solve for x when you have two x's, right? You have to use, you either can combine like terms, which you can't do, or you have to factor. But now I only have 1x, I can use my inverse operations. So the first inverse operation I have to do is my, I have to undo this um, exponent of 2. So I have to take the square root on both sides. Therefore, I have x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 17. Now, the square root of 17 cannot be simplified, so we're going to leave it like that. Just remember, since I introduced the square root, I have to take the plus or minus of the number. Now, to get x by itself, I'm just going to add 2. So therefore, my final answer is x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 17. Yes? Or it can be simplified, like the square root of 8. You know, you could simplify that as like yeah, 2 square root of 2. Yeah, two. Right. Just leave it like that. Okay. Yep. And that will be your final answer. And notice you're going to have two answers, 2 plus square root of 17 and 2 minus the square root of 17. But we're not doing decimals. Just leave it like that. Yes? Would it be wrong if you left it like what? Here? No, that's, that's how I want you to leave it. Just like I don't want you doing decimals. I want the exact value. OK? And that's it. Yes.